Christians among them. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yes. Remember the mixed multitude that fell on us thing? There were Egyptians among them, but God spoke to everyone in camp around Sinai, regardless of nationality. This is the basis on which all of you, nationality has nothing to do with it. It has to do with your attitude towards me. Amen. That's what the Bible says. In Acts 10, 34, 35, then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, he that feareth God and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. God doesn't care if you're Hispanic or African American or Caucasian or Native American. He doesn't care. God wants, has one question. What's your attitude to me? Yes. Now we divide people into black, white, Latino, Asian, uh, Chinese, uh, that's Asian. Uh, what else? Middle class, lower class, bottom class, scum class, and top class. We have all kinds of divisions. You know how many divisions God has? Obey me, disobey me, that's it. Amen. And all these divisions have corrupted the church. Because the church is determined to be like the world. The world has no interest in being like the church. But the church is determined to be like the world to the extent that when you talk about holy living, church members attack you for attacking the world. The world's biggest defenders are church members. They, they defend TV, they defend movies, they defend sex out of marriage, they defend uh, liquor on Christmas Day, they defend Hollywood, they defend professional sports, they defend everything that is a part of the world. A black person talks against rap, all other black people try to string him up. You are you're an unfaithful black person, you talk against rap. God has one question. If you obey me, Amen. you're fine with me. Amen. And so the Israelites, the Egyptians who followed them, and we cannot assume there are only two nationalities in any particular nation. How many nationalities in the United States? <coughs> huh? Everyone has a hyphenated name, Irish American. Hmm? Uh, something else American, African American came from Africa, Irish American came from Ireland, then you have uh, uh, what, uh, Israeli American who came from the Middle East, what are the, you have Spanish American who come from somewhere else, you have uh, Greek American who come from the Mediterranean, then you have this hyphen American, that hyphen American, and so that's the way nations have always been. What I'm trying to say, around Sinai were gathered not just Israelites. You see, when God sent the ten plagues, some Egyptians brought the cattle in when he sent the, the plague of hail and, 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 and he brought them in. You see, when God told the Israelites, bring your cattle in, nothing will happen to them. Egyptians who heard, some brought their cattle in and nothing happened to their cattle. Again, God doesn't care what your nationality is. What is your attitude to what I say? So God said, anyone in a house that has the blood on the door is safe. He didn't say any Israelite. Ah, you don't listen. He said, anyone. He never said, when I see the passport, I'll pass over you. He said, when I see the blood. I don't care who's in that house. Show me the blood. So God said, now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and that condition has not changed. Because God doesn't change it. His righteousness doesn't change. Yeah. And keep my covenant. Then, then, he shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. And he shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the, the children of Israel. God said, Moses, that's all you need to tell them. Just keep my covenant. The condition of which was the law. It was never God's will that all these little sacrifices be necessary. You're listening to me. Amen. Abraham didn't have them. Isaac didn't have them. Jacob didn't have them. Noah didn't have them. Adam didn't have them. All these men, they just had one sacrifice. Symbolizing that was the burnt offering, that's it. 
But when all these Israelites and warfare came out of Egypt, they'd almost forgotten God. When God said, if you keep my covenant, they said, yeah, yeah, we'll do it. Not realizing they needed divine help. Then God had to introduce all these sacrifices to teach them from an elementary kindergarten level what salvation was all about. But the condition was obedience to his law. So God came down and gave the law. Now when we read Genesis, uh, Exodus 19.4, ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. And how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. The Israelites saw the ten plagues. They saw the ten plagues. That wasn't all God did to the Egyptians. He destroyed them in the Red Sea. The Bible says not one Egyptian soldier escaped. Does God know how to deal with your enemies? Yes. Amen. <laughs> One of the most dangerous things to do is to mess with a genuine child of God. Amen. Not just a church member. A child of God. Amen. Sometimes God may allow it to test his child. But when God said, my child has had enough. Yes. You better be miles away from that person you've been harassing. Yes. <laughs> because God will wipe you off the face of the earth. Amen. And that's not murder. He's just taking back what's his. That's life. God doesn't murder people. He just says, give me back my life. And so they saw what God had done. But what they had never seen before was a demonstration of God's holiness. And so in verse 16 of Exodus 19, the Bible says, came to pass on the third day of the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that were in the camp trembled. Why? These were, the, these were the, the, the demonstrations that accompanied God's giving of his law. God wanted to impress upon them the sacredness of his law. How much his law meant to him that God accompanied the law with all these natural phenomena. And if you read Revelation, look at Exodus 19, 16 again. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were what? Thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet what? Exceeding loud. Go to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation 4, we have a vision of God's throne. That's what John is seeing. Keep in mind that the lightning, the thunder, the voices, all of that was associated with God giving his law. Revelation chapter 4, look at verse 5. You go from the second book of the Bible to the last. You have Revelation 4, reading verse 5, what does it say? And out of the throne proceeded what? Lightning and thunderings and voices. Does that sound similar to something you just read? Yeah. Yes, because John is looking away at the throne room of God. And what is the foundation of God's throne? He not come speak with confidence. Tell me, what is the foundation? What is God's throne based on? His law. And the throne is symbolized in the sanctuary by the mercy seat. And the, 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 uh, the container for the, for the, the, called the ark. The lid was the mercy seat. In there were the Ten Commandments. God's presence was right above the mercy seat, the Shekinah glory. It symbolizes his throne where he sat. So if we transfer that to a literal, uh, as it is in heaven, God's throne is based on his law. Amen. And the throne represents a kingdom, and God's kingdom is universal. Let me say it slowly. The foundation of God's kingdom is his law. Amen. You remove the law, the kingdom crumbles. That's why in the United States, what's the foundation of this government? The Constitution. Any law is thrown out if it is what? Unconstitutional. Let me say it again. When a soldier enlists in the army, he swears to do what? Defend the Constitution against what kind of enemies? Domestic and foreign. Aid. The president must swear the same oath to defend not Michigan or California, the Constitution. Are you listening to me? He is not sworn to defend democracy or sworn to defend you know, high salaries. He is sworn to defend the Constitution. 